This is Fred Beck from Fred Talks Fighting. Today, I'm very lucky to be joined by, once again, Jeff Mayweather. So thank you very much for coming on, Jeff. How you doing? Glad for I'm having all... me on. Thank you. I'm all good, Jeff. So what's been going on with you, Jeff? Um, very busy. Um, I'm actually training probably about, uh, about 10 fighters. And um, I'm doing a whole lot of um, stuff trying to, you know, come coming out with um, new merchandise. And um, so I'm doing a lot of um, work with that as well, trying to, you know, do my own brand. And um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm extremely busy right now. I was going to say, Jeff, last time we spoke, now, now I've got a bit of a background, not much of a background, but... You were just starting doing your uh, your Doom sessions on Zoom. And now you've gone big time, Jeff. You've got your T-shirts going. They're selling really well. And you've also got your podcast going. Yeah. And how's that? How's that all going? Yeah, the podcast, I mean, it's fun. We just we just go there and have fun. Oops. And so, Jeff, what I've really noticed about you, you see I'm training 10 fighters there. It's a lot, what a lot of people don't know about you is that you're very humble and down to earth. I mean, you're training them at City Boxing Gym where Justin Gamba trains Kayla Plant and Chefino Lopez comes in to visit sometimes. And you said in the last interview that it's very important to give back. In um, the- yes, I think so. And you, you often give back to the fighters you're training. Why is that so important to you? Um, I don't know. I mean, I just think that in life, we all have a purpose. And, you know, I think at some point in life, when you really find your purpose, you try to live in it. You know, in my purpose, I think, you know, for me, I think that God put me here to to help others, you know, on there, you know, I mean, it doesn't necessarily just, it's not just with boxing, it's with people that are less fortunate, you know, and I mean, sometimes it's giving people advice. I mean, it's, it's so many different ways that you can help people. And so, and that's what I do. That's what I try to do, you know, best as I can. You often find that boxers, successful boxers like yourself, kind of drift away from the sport and don't kind of give back, but you do, which is really great. And so I'm guessing, Jeff, you keep up with the sport, don't you? You know what's going on? In- yeah, pretty much. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's, one thing I never really knew was the smaller weight classes until there's a name that's so big that you have to watch them, you know, kind of like when maybe like when Pacquiao was like 106 or something like that, or, or Michael Carvajal, you know, you know, guys like that, that made those divisions, you know, watchable as well. But I mean, I start watching guys after, I mean, after you get to 126 and up. I, I usually don't see no guys under that under that weight class, but I mean I'm still trying to I'm still trying to follow. But I mean just that weight class, those weight classes below 126 are not that popular. So I'm guessing since you're keeping up with the boxing, I'm guessing you watched Canelo last night. Yeah, yeah, I watched it. If you're an incredible trainer, and I want to get your opinion on Canelo. Say you were training a fighter to fight him, what would you train him for, and how would you beat him? Well, I mean, first of all, you got to be a good fighter. Can't just be a fighter. You got to be a good fighter. You got to be, obviously, it must got to be a great fighter. My nephew's the only one beat him. So, I mean, you you talk about coming up with a strategy, maybe to beat him, but there's no guarantee. But the thing is, is that Canelo is a very, very good fighter. I mean, solid in, in every aspect of boxing. You know, I mean, he's a great puncher, got you know, got good hand speed and, and got good power. And um and his confidence, you know, is you know, is it's right now is at an ultimate high. So I mean it's gonna be tough, tough to beat Canelo. I don't care who who I would be training or anything, but I mean, I don't know. I mean there's not a whole lot. When I look at Canelo, there's not a whole lot that I can see where, you know, someone can really, you know, beat him you know I mean just like I mean my nephew beat him but you know I mean the Canelo that I see now 
is extremely hard to beat. And I don't, I, I don't see anyone that I can even say that I would train that could possibly beat him. You know, I don't know. I mean, he's just looked like he's the best fighter out there right now. I see certainly pound for pound number one. And after the fight, they announced that Billy Joe Saunders is fighting Canelo Alvarez May 8th. Um, what are your thoughts on that fight? And do you think Billy Joe Saunders can beat him? Or do you not think that at all? I think, I don't think Billy Joe Saunders can beat him, but I do think that Billy Joe Saunders has, you know, he has a, a good chance of, he has just as good a chance as anybody else, but probably a better chance because he can fight. He's a smart fighter and um, and he's, he's very elusive. So, I mean, he can't, of course, he can't go. I don't think he can go toe to toe with um, Canelo. And I think that he has to fight an extremely smart fight to win. If he's going to win, you know, he's got to be, he's got to fight extremely smart because he can't allow Canelo to just pick his shots and, and and still be there to get hit. You know, he, I don't, I don't, I don't see, um, you know, him having any chance of winning if, if, if that happens. Billy Joe Saunders is one of those fight, fighters which are very hard to hit. He's got extremely good footwork and that's some of the things that Canelo struggled in the past. But do you think you'll be able to beat Canelo, Jeff? Who, me? Yeah, you. When? Yeah, I beat him on, <laughs> I could beat him on uh, Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as you mentioned earlier, Floyd Mayweather Jr., your nephew, is the only one to beat him. And he's got a fight coming up with Logan Paul. What are your thoughts on that? That, fight, that fight's not happening. I don't think it's going to happen. And if it was going to happen, it would already it would already be. It, you got to realize, when Floyd's doing something, you got to promote it for like about four to, I'd say, at least six to four to six months and let that fight build, you know, to its maximum capacity. And I mean, I mean, right now, you know, when is the last time you heard something about Floyd fighting Logan Paul? You haven't heard anything, have you? When he put on his Instagram, like a few, a few months ago, that's the last thing I heard. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That was a few months ago. But right now, by now, it would be all over the world. It wouldn't just be on his Instagram. So I don't think that fight's happening. And like I said, if it was happening, the promotion stuff would already be happening. Everybody would know. That's a very good point. And if the fight does materialize, say the fight does happen, what would your prediction be for that fight? I ain't gonna make no prediction for that. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I mean, Floyd's gonna win. That's obvious. I mean, this dude ain't no real fighter. He's a damn YouTuber. I mean, you had a big part in training care side to beat Logan Paul. Would you like to fight Logan Paul, Jeff? No, nah, I wouldn't fight him. I'm too old for that shit. <laughs> I ain't fight nobody. <laughs> if I fight somebody, it's going to be planned. We're going we gonna to know what's going to happen. <laughs> it honestly promoted it really well. All right, Jeff, I don't take too much of your time up, so I've only got one more question. If I ever come to Las Vegas, do you think you'll be able, do you think you'll be able to do me on the doom pads? I don't think oh, definitely. Yeah, I, I would do it for free. <laughs> <laughs> do you think you do you think you'll be able to do me, Jeff? Do me. Yeah, I, I doom you, yes, definitely. You ever seen my doom videos? Yeah, I've seen them. You hear the guys pretty hard with the pads. They're not hard, but the pads are not hard. That's why That's why I do it, because I want them to get prepared for a real fight when, if they do get hit, you know, that their, their reaction time and stuff will be, be a whole lot better. But, um, and plus, the mitts, they're, they're not hard at all. They're, they're soft. That's why I designed them that way, to be, to be soft so I can use them that way, you know, to teach defense. It's a very good coaching technique. I just realized I've got one more question to ask you. Um, say, say any upcoming fighters or boxers are watching this video, watching this interview. Do you have any advice for any upcoming boxers coming up through the professional ranks? Do you have any advice to them at all? Um, well, basically, the same advice that I give to almost anyone is that, you know, you have to find the passion in what you're doing. And that ain't necessarily boxing. It could be anything. 
You know, you could be, you know, I mean, you can be a bus driver. You can be a tax cab driver. It doesn't matter. You know, if you love, if you find out, you find the passion in what you're doing, you find the love in what you're doing, it's no longer work. I mean, you're waking up, you know, excited and happy to be in that moment of whatever you're doing. So, I mean, I think that that has a lot to do with a person's success in life, just not in boxing, but in life as, you know, not just in, 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 you know, in boxing, but in life. And so I think that that's one of the most important things is, you know, um, of course, hard work, you gotta, you gotta work hard. That's, that's, that's goes without saying, but um, you gotta find the passion in what you're doing. You gotta find the passion in that boxing and you gotta wake up when you go to that gym, you gotta say to yourself that, wow, I'm glad this gym is open, you know, and basically, and today, and I'm going to challenge my trainer by, you know, showing him that, you know, how bad I want it, you know, so I mean, that's, I think that's the most important factor, and like I said, but that's, that's an, that's a factor that applies to just life, but it applies to boxing, it applies to everything that you do. I mean, that's very true, you got to love what you're doing, and then it isn't work. All right, Jeff, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Where can people find your podcast and where, where can people buy your T-shirts from? I love some of my merchandise is in, um, in Las Vegas Fight Shop. That's here in Vegas. But also have, like, um, links on my, on my Instagram also. And, um, and uh, also... You can go to um, www. Dot, um, heavy hitters uh, heavy hitters gear. Dot com. Also, I mean, because I'm attached to them and I'm also attached to Title, and of course, uh, anything that has Title on it, Title R has many stores around here, so you can just go there and, and purchase that. Perfect. I put that. If anyone wants to buy any of that stuff, I put it in the link in the description. All right, Jeff. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank you.